Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the transfiguration of Jesus. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus gave a powerful teaching when he said, If anyone would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. Then he said, For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Luke chapter 9 and verse 26. Jesus knew that very soon many people, including his own disciples, would be ashamed of his words, especially when he began to say, I will be crucified. This teaching is the first of three times that Jesus plainly spoke about being crucified and then being raised from the dead. Jesus came to earth to be crucified. It was his mission. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Jesus came to earth with the mission that few people were able to understand then, and even now many people still do not understand why he came. To help his disciples overcome the shame they would soon feel, Jesus spoke about an experience that they were about to have that would help them see beyond the shame of the cross to the glory and the honor that Jesus would receive after his crucifixion. This is how Matthew worded it, Truly, truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 28. Here is how Luke put it. I tell you the truth, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 9 and verse 27. He must have been referring to some event that was about to unfold. <clears throat> and this story is so important, it is found four times in the New Testament. Let's begin with Luke's account. About eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on a mountain to pray, Luke chapter 9 and verse 28. Now, none of the disciples, certainly not Peter, James, or John, were prepared for what happened next. Jesus was transfigured before them. His clothes became radiant, intensely white, so no one on earth could bleach them. Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 3. Jesus was transfigured before the eyes of Peter and James and John into the glory he had with God before he came to earth. Jesus' body caught on fire with the glory of God. He became brighter than the midday sun. The transfiguration of Jesus transported Peter, James, and John back to see Jesus before he humbled himself to become human. They saw the glory he had shared with God in heaven. Not only did it uh, transfer them back, it transferred them forward. It took them to the time to see the future when the glory will be on Jesus when he returns to earth at the end of the age. These men saw Jesus' glory at the beginning and saw his glory that will be at the end of time. Peter, James, and John soon discovered they were not alone with Jesus. Luke says two men were talking with Jesus, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of Jesus' departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Luke chapter 9, verse 30 
and 31. What were they talking about? In advance of the most difficult time Jesus would face during his earthly journey, Father sent Moses and Elijah to strengthen him. They were talking with Jesus about his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension back to heaven. It was no surprise. They knew it was coming. Jesus knew it was coming. Moses and Elijah represented the words of the law and prophets that Jesus was about to fulfill. Moses and Elijah were examples of the power and authority that Jesus had given his disciples. Moses represented the authority of God through the staff that he carried. And Elijah represented the power of God through the mantle that he wore. As they were speaking with Jesus, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. Luke chapter 9 and verse 34. A voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Luke chapter 9 and verse 35. The voice they heard on the mountain was the same voice that spoke at Jesus' baptism, saying, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. That voice could only have been the voice of God because angels cannot have children. Note with me that the disciples did not call Jesus the Son of God, God himself called Jesus his son, whom he loved. Three times in the course of his earthly life, the voice of Jesus was heard saying that Jesus is his beloved son. If God called Jesus his beloved son, who are we to say that God cannot have a son? God said it himself. I invite you to ask God to open your eyes to see Jesus the way God sees him. Now, this experience on the mountain had a profound impact upon Peter, James, and John. Peter wrote, We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. Peter is talking about what he experienced on the mountaintop with Jesus. And Peter wants everyone to have a powerful encounter with Jesus. As long as you are trying to compare Jesus with some other human figure, you've not yet met the real Jesus. He is incomparable. Every single night, Jesus visits people who don't know him, and he reveals his glory to them. Many people listening to me have had a powerful encounter with Jesus. Someone listening to me right now had a vision of a man in a white robe just last night. If you saw Jesus last night, do whatever he told you to do. You can trust Jesus. Now, as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man was risen from the dead. Mark chapter 9 and verse 9. They did what Jesus asked them to do. But after he returned to heaven, they spoke about this experience with everyone everywhere they went. Peter could not stop telling people that he was an eyewitness to the majesty of Jesus. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17. John begins his gospel by referring to this mountaintop experience with Jesus. This is what he said, John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
John and Peter were eyewitnesses to the glory of God that was upon Jesus. Now, it was not just Jesus who was transformed. After the apostle Peter encountered the glory of God on the road to Damascus, he was transformed. He taught that the presence of Jesus changing our lives transforms us into the glory of Jesus. Jesus wants everyone to have this experience. Paul put it this way, We all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, I release to you a transforming experience that the Spirit of God will come upon you and transform your thinking, even your appearance, that the glory of God will rest upon you. Paul said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Renewing our mind is the process of changing our human thinking to thinking like God thinks. The renewed mind changes everything about our approach to life. The renewed mind lives with an awareness of unseen realities. The renewed mind lives with an awareness that when he changes our thinking on the inside, it becomes evident on our faces, on our exterior. A renewed mind picks up the mind of God and radiates his hope in every situation. Down through the ages, those who have witnessed the death of persons martyred for their faith in Christ have seen the glory of God upon their lives as they departed. Everything Jesus said on the cross reflected the mind and the will of God. It is a glorious thing that Jesus was transfigured and people saw it and spoke about it so we can be transformed ourselves. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. As I take a few moments and pray for you, I'm asking God to reveal his glory to you that with your own eyes you will see the presence of Jesus with the glory of God upon him. His face will shine. His eyes will, will stare right into yours. And you won't feel shame. You'll feel so loved by God. And you'll understand new things. Jesus will teach you how to forgive. Jesus will teach you how to love people deeply. Jesus will heal your emotional wounds. Jesus will heal your physical illnesses. Jesus will change your mind. He will renew your mind so that you think pure thoughts. You think the thoughts of God and you want more than anything else the will of God in your life, not by force, but by the power of his Holy Spirit. I release the glory of God to come upon you and to transform your thinking as Jesus manifested his glory before Peter, James, and John, and their lives were forever changed. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.